speaking to me now is the British Premier Champion Gary Buckland. Gary, how did you first come involved in boxing? Uh, well, literally, I was 11 years old, and all my mates were going to the boxing gym, uh, and I just decided to join along, and then I took a liking to it. From an early age as an amateur, what ambition did you have? Um, ambition was to be Welsh champion in amateur boxing, and then ever since that, then I wanted to be British champion in amateur boxing, and then uh, since, since I was 17, then I wanted to turn professional, and then just win titles, really. So, uh, as a, a pro now, what, what's your ambition? What's, what's the big dream? Um, the big dream now is the next step now. The big dream was to win the British title. Um, the next step now is either to win it outright or win the European. That's the next step now for me. That's the next dream. You're a trainer's Tony Borg. Have you always worked with Tony? Um, I worked with Tony ever since I was 14. I was in Spot uh, Amateur Adventure for three or four years. And then I moved over to St. Joseph's then and turned professional in the gym. Go! Tony Borg's been around the Welsh boxing scene now for decades. Was it just recently that he's become more well-known in British level? What would advantage is it for you having Tony Borg in your corner? Oh, it's been great. Ever since you know I started training with Tony, um, he's, a, he's a terrific trainer and a pad taker. He's you know he's awesome on the pads and then he's uh, he got a good temperament in the corner as well. Like um, ever since I was 14 with him, um, but now he got me and Selby and we got what we deserve. And now his his recommendation is, is going good. Like you know. You train in the St. Joseph's gym in Newport. Mm. Uh, it's a massive gym, loads of professionals there. How, how good is that to have a, be a, an environment like our winning gym? Yeah, it's great because, you know, we're, for sparring, we haven't got to go elsewhere for sparring. We've got people coming to us and we go there on a Sunday and we've got about 10 boys there ready to spar with. So, yeah, it's great. I know just recently, in the last six months or so, you've been working with strength and conditioning coach Darren Wilson. What's that brought to your game? Um, well, I started working with Darren for the last fight, um, Gary Sykes, and the two of which I was you know, 100% fit, and I'm just going to carry on doing it for every fight, really, because it, uh, I felt great doing it. So what advantages does having a strength and conditioning coach as well as a normal coach bring to your game? Um, well, like I say, because it was the first time, um, I've never been so fit as what I was for the last fight, so it must have helped me like at least 50%, like you know, because I felt great in the ring. So I'm just going to carry on doing the same thing for every fight now. First major fight was against John Murray for the British and European mm. title. Um, can you just talk, talk a bit about that fight? Yeah, well, literally, I was out of the um, I was out of the ring for, for a couple of weeks. I had a broken rib, and uh, I got off of the fight then against John Murray and. I was doubting to take it, but I took it, and uh, I had three weeks notice for training, getting weight off, stone half a weight off, and then I went there and I got, I got beat by, by I wouldn't say the better, well, he is a, the better guy in the night, but it would have been a different fight if I would have had my training. Did anyone advise you not to take the fight, or was it just your own decision to take it? Um, it was my own decision. The trainer and, and, and my manager, Brian Powell, they said it's entirely up to you, you know, it would be a great fight, but I, yeah, it was my own decision to take it. It was a, a very tough fight, and you, you know, produced an excellent performance. But h how um, difficult was it for you to come back from that loss? Because it was a very physical fight. Yeah, it was like I say. If I would have had uh, ten weeks training, I would have lost like that. With ten weeks training, I think right, I'm no good at lightweight. I'm going to come down to super feather. Um, but I know I put up a good performance for the train I had, and I just thought then I would try super feather, and then I come down to the prize fight and won that, and then everything's been good from that. So it was a good learning curve, really. Whose decision was it to drop them a super feather? Was it something you and Tony spoke about together? Uh, it was something I was speaking about all the time, but even before I boxed John Murray, I always said I can make super feather. And then, uh, literally, when I boxed John Murray, then he was a bigger guy in the ring. And then I just thought, you know, I box, if I get down, it'd be smaller guys, really. I think you um, shocked a lot of people when you went to the prize fight at all, and done so well. Had three excellent fights, two excellent stoppages. I mean, how big a, an influence in your career is that winning that prize fight? Oh, that was great. That was the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, even before I won the, you know, the British, like, you know, it was the biggest thing that happened to me so far. Did you find people treated you a little bit differently after the prize fight there? Yeah, everybody stopped and taking notice and, you know, the same last guy and signed autographs and that, yeah, it was great. Because up until that point in your career, you, you very good boxer, very fit, good work rate, but you've never appeared to have devastating knockout power. Then in the prize fight there, three fights, you knocked out two guys. Yeah, well, literally, uh, you know, there was two nice shots, the body shot with Dave Matthews and the, the knockout with Gary Sykes, but... I wouldn't say I'm a knockout artist. I just I like to be spiteful and connect well and hurt him and punish him really. Did you when when you caught guys sakes that punch? Did you just know instantly? That yeah, as soon as I caught, as soon as he went down, I knew he wasn't getting up. And the same with Derry Matthews really. Yeah, did you just just feel like a, a sweet shot? Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was just nice. After this prize fight, though, you went on to fight Guy Sykes for the British title. Super fair there. Did you just talk about that fight. 
Yeah, um, like I say, I was 100% fit, and I know he was going to be the same. He's always fit, guys. So he's one of the fittest, fittest guys in British boxing, really. Um, yeah, uh, for the fight, I won the first couple of rounds, and I know then he was waiting for the second half of the fight. Because that's their game plan to step it up. But I, I know I had the fitness in the tank, you know, to step it up with him. Your next fight is against Paul Trust Scott, title defence. What can you tell us about Paul? What type of fight you expect? Um, I've only seen so much from him on YouTube, but he's a, a nut right boxer and likes to dictate the pace. So uh, literally what i got to do is uh, take, uh, take his game plan away and, and fight at my pace. Do you um, make a plan in advance of a fight? Or do you watch videos of people and then make a plan? No, literally I like to go in there and fill the first round and then I just go on from there in the first round. And just, just After the Trust Scott fight, what's the uh, plan? What's the well, well, hopefully it'll be your title shot next uh, against uh, Fagatelli, um, the Belgian champion. So uh, that's the next step, hopefully. Right. Gary Bicklin, thank you very much. Thank you. Good,